Sorry. Fifteen minutes, you sexy beast. <laughs> I love when somebody calls me a sexy beast and the other people clap. That's a weird, <laughs> awesome thing to have happen. <laughs> you people have been doing so many years in psychological damage. Thank you. You with the red backwards cap. Uh, so I was a huge fan of that anime show, and now that it's been a couple years, do you still feel like it ended right around that time? It was like a good point to end it, or do you yes, I do. I mean, we could have done it forever. I mean, we enjoyed it, but you know, Terry and I both got busy, and it was really hard to kind of juggle with everything we did. And I don't want you—I don't want you to think that we stopped doing it because we're like, "I hate you, get away from me." Um, that we couldn't stand. So this Terry and I are still uh, best of friends. But we had been doing it for four years, and that was a long time to be doing anything, especially when, when in this business, you're used to doing something maybe for eight months, and then you move on to something else because that's just an actor's life. So four years to an actor feels like a small eternity, and it was like, well, why don't, and we, we sat down and had a talk. We're like, well, maybe in a few months, let's, let's kind of think about ending it, because I want it to end well. I don't want there to be like a whole like last season that jumps the shark, and we're clearly just recycling the same old questions and the same old stuff. So we, we ended it when we did, because we loved it, and we thought, if we end it here, everything we've done is good up to that point. We let it go, there's gonna be some bad stuff, and I don't want this to ever get bad, or tired, or boring. So let's end it while it's while we're ahead. So, and I miss it, sure, I miss it, but I think we ended it, and I think Terry agrees with me, and I know Steven agrees with me, uh, that we ended it the best possible time. Ah, I get emotional. Um, very back, very back, yes, yes. So, um, I really appreciate all your work, and uh, the first time I watched an anime with my boyfriend was Spice and Wolf, many different types of characters over the years and there's always uh, so speaking broadly if we kind of divide the characters like they're the really crazy crazy weird ones that are so much fun to watch they're just train wrecks beautiful train wrecks they're out there high energy they are high strong they are they are the characters we love to watch because they just walk into a room completely devastate everything and then leave like nothing happened and they're like france is that kind of character uh kabumi lee and the gray man is that kind of character isaac and miria are those kind of characters um uh, uh, skiyama is definitely that kind of character and they're fun they're fun i will say as a voice actor the choice you have working with that animation like your choices are limited because the high energy is there and so you kind of get swept up by the energy of the, the Seiyu's original lead, or just the music that happens to be accompanying them, or just the way they're drawn. The crazy characters can be easier. They're more exhausting to play, but they're easier because you're like, that's exactly what he's gonna sound like. Because look at him, look at him, of course he sounds like this. Characters like Lawrence, and Kiyoya, and Sebastian, to a lesser extent, many others I've played, are much harder to voice because they, they play it very close to the best. Everything they do, they're very, they're very, they weigh their words very carefully. They speak very, not monotone, but they don't show a lot of emotion because they're, they're very, they're, they just, it's poker faced all the time. And, and that's very much Lawrence because he's, he's a negotiator. That's what he does. So he's always very, you know, he's always thinking five steps ahead of whoever he's talking to. And for that reason, he's, but he still has to be friendly. So there's a lot going on. But for that reason, like, I feel like you have so many ways you can voice that character. Any given line can have so many layers of meaning that it's easier to make, to, it's easier to misstep and maybe say a line away, you're like, oh no, that doesn't make sense anymore, because now he, maybe that's just weird. So, but it's really, it's more of a, it makes me feel like more of an actor when I do those roles, because the challenge is, those characters are more of a blank slate. And so you're, you have to kind of put everything into it. You don't have like, there's never, there's rarely any like crazy high-strung moments where Lawrence is flailing about, you go, oh, I know exactly how he's gonna sound. So every time Lawrence speaks, I'm like, wow, I, I'm really surprised by how I sound when I would say something in Lawrence's voice, because I think Lawrence is surprised by whatever comes out of his mouth. And Brina felt the same way playing Holo, who's a little more, not insane, but a little higher energy than Lawrence. Uh, but I love their back and forth. I love their back and forth, because he wasn't the tone setter for that show. And in shows where you're playing the crazy person, the crazy person is always, almost always, the tone setter for a scene. 
Like they come in and they are, the, they are the thing that everyone else has to deal with. But if you're the character that has to deal with the crazy thing in the room, Lawrence and Holo, um, it's a different challenge. It's a different challenge. It's more like having to, it's more like playing tennis and like just trying to anticipate the other actor's moves. And it's really, really funny. Quick note, uh, so Brina and I have uh, starred opposite each other in so many voice over projects over the years that it's kind of an inside joke now in the industry. Like, oh, Tana and, and Brina are totally like work husbands and uh, work spouses. She's my wife. Um, <laughs> and it's adorable. And we, got, we finally, for the first time in our career, got to do a physical flesh and blood scene together at a scene workshop that we were taking part in. And it was wonderful. We did this proper like stage scene in front of everybody. And we're like, okay, here we go. We've been like work husband and wife for like 10 years and now we're actually getting physical. And it was a weird, dark, crazy <laughs> scene. And we scared the shit out of everybody in the room. <laughs> uh, I just had to sing her braces for a second. Okay, uh, mom. Hey, come <laughs> uh, away from Tom Sommer Woo! Um, Woo! Popular guy. Yeah, apparently. Um, how did you get your inspiration for his voice? Uh, really just kind of looking at the beautiful animation in Kami-sama Kiss, because like, his, his, he, everything about Tomoe, and the way he moves, and the way he just sort of, in, in, even the funnier moments where he gets mad or something, or just kind of over the top, looks like a beautiful, like, sumi brush silkscreen <laughs> painting. And so he has this kind of silky, graceful quality to him, even when he's pissed off. Um, and that's just, so I just kind of, I would get really swept up in kind of this, this weird tactile feeling of like silk and like the smell of bamboo. Somehow, it was something about that show just made it very weirdly uh, sensory for me. And so the voice just kind of came out because he's a spirit of all those things. Like he's, he's this sort of, the spirit of all those qualities. So of course, you know, I, you know, he would smell like this. He would sound like this. His blue flame to me smells like, like cinnamon and earth. That's, that's weird, I know, but that's, that's like what kind of goes in my head, and so that was my inspiration. And of course, the brilliant Seiyu that, that brought to him to life first is always an inspiration. It sounds gorgeous! <laughs> yes, thank you. If Tomaki confessed his love to Kyoya, how would Kyoya react? <laughs> we don't have the money. <laughs> I think, I don't, wow. I think he would just, uh, he would probably just kind of like, very gently uh, crush a pie in his face and call him a dumbass <laughs> and walk on and then cry in the corner. Like I, yeah, oh my god, no, don't tell me that. No, I'm like, <sighs> <sighs> oh. <laughs> I love that, I love that. Ah, uh, uh, you. Have you watched 50% off yet? Yes. I love watching parodies of what we do. I think they're funny and I think the people, I think the, um, uh, what, uh, uh, what are they, Team Four Star? Woo! Are hysterious. Really, really funny people. I know several of them, and they're just delightful. Uh, someone I haven't picked on yet? You! Um, when you got cast as Kyoya, I believe Troy Baker was supposed to get the role, but then it didn't work right. out. Right. And he was like, you just did such a better job than I would have ever done. Is there a role that Troy you... is such a class act, though. Yeah. That's yeah. like, Troy would have been so badass as Kyoya. <laughs> Let's just all be adult yeah. about this. Like, Troy would have been amazing. And I was just very lucky to get because I was I was kind of an unknown quantity at the time. So Troy was much bigger name, still continues to be, with very good reason. And so when he was not able to take the role, I was like, ah, ah. I wasn't told that until much later when he told me that. Uh, no, he didn't tell me that. Excuse me, Caitlin did, and then he confirmed it. And I was like, really? I was in your shadow? Holy! Shit. And he was just wonderfully gracious about it. But that's not even your question. I'm totally <laughs> rambling. Go on. <laughs> no worries. Um, is there a character that? you got passed up on to, and then someone else got, and you were like, dude, you nailed that. No, no, every time I, like, I, mean, I walk in and go, awesome, that character, and I go back into the lobby where all the other actors are waiting, go, go home, bitches, I nailed it. <laughs> uh, no, I, yes, frequently, frequently uh, in this. I mean, so the reality of being an actor, for those of you that want to be an actor, let me tell you real quick, uh, in this business, particularly voice acting, you get maybe one, you land one role for about every hundred you audition for. Uh, and that may, you know, so it may be months, even years you go without, I mean, I've luckily never had a really big dry spell, but there's plenty of times where I like had my heart set on a particular character, which is always death. No, never, never have your heart so set on playing something that you're gonna be heartbroken when you don't get it. So you just kind of have to be zen about it. And then, you know, but then you do, yeah, a friend, we're all friends and family, so like someone else, like Ian may get a part, and I'll be like, you son of a, no, you son of a girl. Um, I, I kind of resolved this, that tendency in myself years ago, 
by just dealing with rejection in the way of going, you know what, I love, obviously there's something about the character that draws me as a human being to them and makes me want to perform them as an actor, but it's the, it's the human connection first, it's, my, it's the character that matters. So I don't get the part, whoever does, if they sound great, I'm gonna love it and forget that I ever wanted to, to, to be in the show because I'm just like, it's the character that, that draws me. And there's always other work, you know, there's always the next thing to try out for. I will never tell you what roles I lost to other amazing actors because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to undermine their performance by going, oh, can you imagine me doing that? Yeah, just close your eyes for a minute. No, I mean, there's, I've been, I've been not replaced, but I have been, uh, I've lost auditions to just about every one of my colleagues at some point. And I've kicked their asses and other stuff too, so, you know, it's, it's nice, you know, dynamic, goes back and forth. Ah, uh, you wouldn't have the readiest, you. Yeah. Five minutes. Five minutes. I'm on. You told us about, about how, like, you, frequently in your imagination, you imagine like the stories about your characters, like in their video lives, like after the show is done. I imagine you've also like pictured interactions between those characters, possibly even violence, and violence because they just do not get along <laughs> at all. Can you tell us some of the more interesting stories that you? Uh, my favorite is inter any interaction between France and Sebastian. <laughs> Which in my head always plays out something like, Oh my god, you're so sexy, do you want to come work for me? No. <laughs> uh, there's others, I've thought of, uh, I've thought, for some reason I had, I, I had a dream one night of Scar and uh, Dororo and uh, the Frog, like in an arena together, fighting. <laughs> And Scar was like shirtless and just like so ready to like whatever, but also super confused that his opponent was this tiny little <laughs> frog thing in a mask. And he just kind of, and Dora was like, that's right, you get it, did it, and boom. It's funny, I, I, in my head, they're all like hanging out having dinner or something and bitching about politics or whatever. It's, it's quite boring, actually, but... Uh, let's see, more toward the back. Uh, you, toward the back, white shirt. Yes, you just pointed to yourself. After your accidental sergeant, did you... Wait, can I stop you for a moment? Fuck you in that voice. <laughs> I am not helping you become an actor. You will take work away from me. <laughs> like, I have a question. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> After your accident as a sergeant, uh, did you ever think where you could hope that you would achieve what you did? I didn't understand a word you said, I just lost my eyes. <laughs> um, so after my accidental starting, did I... Did, did you I think or hope you'd get where you are now? I had no idea this would happen. I had none. I still get weirded out by it, because I'm like, I'm here, I'm like, hi! I walk by and a bunch of people are like, oh my god, hi, I'm like, oh, what, hi, 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 I'm just a crazy guy in a padded room making funny voices. <laughs> happens to be a mic in front of me and I use it for stuff, I'd be doing that anyway. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I really don't, it's weird, so I, I will say, though, before I started doing this profession, uh, I was uh, in marketing for a long time, for about seven, eight years, something like that, which is a felt like forever, because I didn't like it. I mean, I, I it paid the bills, and I worked with some of the wonderful people, but I, I wasn't fulfilled by it, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't terribly good at it either, so everything was always stressful and a struggle, and then I started doing voice acting full time, and that was a terribly, like, an anxious plunge I made. When I got the opportunity to go full time, I was like, I don't know if there's any going back, I'm giving up a life of security and a 401k, and, and a nine to five job, and, and healthcare, uh, to be self-employed, uh, and then and it's, that was twelve years ago now. And in the eight years that I was in marketing, it felt like a hundred. And in the twelve years that I've been doing voice actors, I've uh, been uh, doing voice acting. I feel <laughs> in the twelve years that I've been doing voice actors. <laughs> Three cases of VD. No, okay. <laughs> so terrible. Now, in the, in the 12 years that I've been doing what I do now, uh, I swear to God, I started this a year ago. Like, it feels like time has just flown. Uh, I'm very, very lucky to get to do what I do. Uh, but the best part, can I just say, I'm going to end on this because I know it's time to go, right? The best part, the best part about what I get to do, it's fun. You get to work with friends and entertain people and breathe life into characters that make people feel something and maybe help them cope with something in their own life that you would never ever imagine it touches people in the way it does. But the 
best part is getting to come and meet you people. Because, and seriously, let me get like kind of really emotional for a moment. Like all of you were so cool and so talented and so like come up with your sketches and your and your like cosplay and the way you treat each other, the moms that come with their daughters and sons and nieces and nephews and whatever. It makes me feel so good because I don't see myself how you see me. I, I, I have this whole weird idea of what I am and it's not always the person I, I'm comfortable with. But when I see you and you're so like, nice and sweet and you kind of like look up to us and like it makes us want to live up to how you see us and it makes me a better person so thank you for being in my life